Hi everybody, Zari Ballard here. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but today we're going to talk about something that I'm going to tell you something that you that you actually already know, but sometimes I need to reiterate. What does an arc say? What are the lies that he will tell you to get back together when he wants to press the relationship reset button? Hang on, I'll be right back. Everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Um, before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. I just published a new book called Vacancy in the Relationship Rabbit Hole. It's all about the recovery and I'm going to insert the cover here so you recognize it. If you see it on Amazon, I'd love you to get it. Leave me some reviews. Hopefully they'll be good. Today I want to talk about something that's been coming up a lot. Um, in my conversations with people and it has to do with the fact that what well, <laughs> the narc lies he fucking lies and why do we believe these lies why do we want to believe say he's been gone a while I'm finding this is what's happening they've disappeared or you've moved out maybe you've even broken up with the narc and here they come back again I remember it well they knocking at the door and trying to get my attention just it was a nightmare He'd be at the door and I would just take off all my clothes and go sit in the shower and cry for two hours until he went away. Let me just give you a couple examples of the people that I've talked to so you know what I'm talking about. This person, this narc, is like, I want you to move out. They lived together for three years. And so she leaves, which was unbelievable. I was so proud of her for just moving out. I could not believe it. I called on a Sunday and there she had already left. And since then, he's been out and about town doing probably all the things he was always doing when they were living together, only he doesn't have to hide it now. Okay, so he's out and about doing his thing and, you know, he'll reach out to her every once in a while, And but she's been doing really, really good. Well, obviously when things aren't working out with whoever it is that they're with, see, when they come back to you, even if you're the fallback girl, you got to know that somebody else is getting the silent treatment. It, it always works that way, okay? So don't think that, you know, it's because you have a favorite that they're coming back. When we're with them, in the beginning, or for the first few years, or whatever it is, we want to be the only one. And how dare you cheat on me, and blah, 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 blah. Then, somehow, they manage down our expectations so that we're actually okay with being the favorite. What the fuck is that all about? It's not something that we would ever lower ourselves to do if we weren't part of this weird relationship. Okay, so this guy, he comes to the door begging to see her, crying even. Okay, crying, saying, I want you back. Let's move back in together, blah, 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 blah. This is over. Let me stay the night. And so he stays. And the next morning, she can already tell he's being weird. Okay, he's being kind of aloof, cool. You know, he mentions seeing her, but kind of not really. He goes to work. She waits for the call. Doesn't come. She calls him, and he's like, I don't think I can do this. Okay, this is just after he spent 24 hours saying, I want to get back together. Let's just start over, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, she said, okay, well, I'll do that if you make sure, you know, you stop texting and stop seeing so-and-so. Instantly, he was like, Oh, see? See how you are? That is why we are not together. See, that's complete manipulation, but gives him an opportunity to go, click, you're done, and you're just left, like, freaking out, okay, because you just gave in. Okay, yeah, that's an issue, but that's not, the, the problem is him. You're being a normal person. You want to talk to this person, you love this person, or you did love this person, or you're not sure how you feel about this person. You want to hear what they have to say. When we get to this point where we don't really want to be with the narc, but we just can't, we're kind of drawn to it anyway, it's almost like we want to find out what's going to happen next. It's like what's around the corner. It's like we're not even crying anymore until they do this crap. See, what they want to do 
is press the relationship reset button. When they want to do that, they don't have time for you uh, putting up personal boundaries or, or trying to uh, turn it around so that the ball's in your court. Okay, They don't want that. All he wants to do is add you to the queue so that you cannot move along. And, and they're, <laughs> they can be pretty persistent. Mine used to come to the door, knock, until his knuckles bled, if he wanted to. He didn't care if my neighbors were walking around. Then if I didn't answer, he'd go around to the back. I, lived on the th I live on the third floor, throw rocks at the window, yell up, embarrassing me. He knows I hate that. I either let him in or I just go in the shower and sit there and, and cry my eyes out until he went away and then have to deal with the silence because then I was on punishment for not letting him in. It's all a big sigh up. The other situation is about a narc who during a fight, he just went off and got married. And then it was, then he came back within like a week. Like, because see, getting married to a narc is no big deal. So when you're, when you're out there and you're worried if you're broken up and your narc's gonna get married, yeah, he might, but so what? He doesn't care. Getting married is like just another day in the life of an arc. Now she is moving and leaving in days. And he suddenly has shown up and wants to go. So what do you do? My thing was, but he's married. So literally, he's taking off. Either he's if, if he does, he's running from the new wife. When a narc is married and tells you that he's getting a divorce, that he's in process of getting a divorce, why aren't you asking for evidence? Why aren't you demanding to see papers? I would be, I know I would be, demanding to see papers. I would want to know every single step of the way. And I find that most women who are involved with a married narc he told me that their fight he filed or she filed or they have this court date or whatever. Unless you see it in writing in, on real legal paper, why would you believe that? So most people don't even ask for it. And he counts on that. Why would he be telling you this big lie about getting divorced if you really truly thought that you were going to demand evidence because he knows that you're not? And I'm telling you right now, if you've been with an ARC for any length of time, if you've been like... A th an item, a thing, you are the fallback girl. And narcs do love familiarity, even though they don't give a fuck about you or your feelings, or they would never have done any of it. And they're willing to tell lies, even ridiculous lies, absolutely ludicrous lies. But there's plausible deniability, which I always say is the narc's free pass. He's willing to tell a ridiculous story in amazing detail, just so you can go, what? Okay, that is so ridiculous that I'm not even going to acknowledge that. I'm going to put it aside. That's basically, and they're like, okay, that's fine. Doesn't matter if that's ridiculous. He's like, I don't care. I'll tell a ridiculous story because she's just gonna look at me and go, okay, I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna let that go. I, I, I guarantee he's not telling the new girls that ridiculous story, just you, because you're the fallback girl. Now you can go and do this back and forth and back and forth. Once you break up and then, once you break up and this, you know, back and forth kind of thing, thankfully, they come back, the, re the relationship reset only lasts like about maybe 24, 48 hours. If you can maintain control, if you can not suffer while they're gone again, which is where the point I got to. Once I decided that my suffering didn't change anything, my everything changed. And two more times later, I let him come back and then it was over forever after 13 years. And I never shed a tear. Okay, you have to get to that point. If you know that you may take him back the next time that he comes, forgive yourself. Just say, okay, I'm going to do that. But you know what? Until then, I am not going to suffer. It's literally the only thing that you have control over is the suffering. Stop suffering. He's going to come back or not come back, whether you suffer or not. And knowing that that's an option, just don't suffer. It'll, it'll do amazing things. You, it will be amazing. When I got into that mode, and my ex came back, I was literally like, oh my God, he's already fucking back. Oh my God. This relationship reset bullshit, 
deep down we hope that they change, but then we find out that they haven't. It's just one more confirmation. It doesn't hurt to add another confirmation to that, to your little stack, as long as you don't suffer when they leave again, because they will leave again. Just let him fucking go. Or you know, just grab some popcorn and sit back and watch the fucking show. It's narc speak. It's all narc speak. Narcs, some narcs, will grovel when they want you back. But in the back of their mind, they're groveling and going, <laughs> I guess I'm going to grovel for about an hour or two. And I'll be gone on Monday because i got to get back to so-and-so. So they'll tell you a ludicrous lie. They don't care because they, they're pretty much certain that they can tell you the ludicrous lie disappear and then when they feel like coming back they can press that reset button again and you'll probably let them come in the door without even asking about that lie okay and if you do you oh you know i'll just turn around and leave is that what you want i didn't come all the way over here to hear you bring that up again you're just bringing up the past it's all narc speak and the girls do it too to the guys so i'm not being sexist here i'm not talking about just guy narcs i truly believe that the girl narcs are far worse so if you're a guy watching this, you know, <laughs> you're in more trouble than the, than the female victims. So what are you going to do? You're going to look ahead. Okay, here's what you're going to do. You feel like you're stuck in a, in a, on a, a roller coaster trying to get, trying to make the final escape, but you have actually broken up. Okay, he's just kind of coming around, pressing the button, and you know he's dating, and you know, and you're dealing with that. But you know, and when he comes, you know, you sleep with him, and yeah, sex is still good, and you, you, he says a bunch of things to you that you want to hear, and you feel kind of anxious though. You're never gonna feel quite comfortable that night because <laughs> because you're not. And the next day you're gonna get a little anxiety when he goes off to work or goes because you know it's mm, you have a feeling he's not gonna call, and he doesn't. It's all predictable. It's not a coincidence that your boyfriend is like my ex-boyfriend is like her ex-boyfriend or like her narc. Okay, it's not a coincidence. This is a disorder. It will never, ever change. The narc isn't going to change for anybody else. He can marry somebody else. It's not going to be any difference. He doesn't care. Mar getting married is like going on a date. He could care less. He'll do it if he has to. Is that what's going to make the girl happy that night? Go get married? Sure. It's pretty crazy. And you need to look at the long run. What is sustainable? Is it sustainable? Can you do this? Actually do it again for another year? Now that you're now that you're not with him anymore, are you going to let him come around? Like how many times will you let him come around like that? I guarantee you, if you decide the first time that you allow that to happen, that huh, fine, he's not going to call me, and I'm not calling him. Okay, and that's it. Go about your business. Do not suffer. Because your suffering doesn't change anything. You will come to a point when he walks out that you're going to be like, Dude, don't you ever fucking call me again. And you change your number. Do not answer the door. Do not check the email. Do not check the voicemails. Be done with it. Okay, the more distance that you put, though, the better. And you can only do that by not suffering. You don't have to do this the rest of your life. You do have control over how you feel about it. So stand up for yourself. Okay, don't be humiliated if you see him or her. But do the right thing. And just get some popcorn, sit back and watch the narc show. Because he's always going to put one on for you. Okay, everybody, that's it for today's video. I'm really going to try to make them on a more consistent basis. I know there's so many topics that I can cover. Make sure you check out my new book, Vacancy in the Rabbit Hole. It's up on Amazon right now, and it will be up on Audible pretty soon. It's in paperback now and in Kindle. And make sure you go to my website, thenarcissisticpersonality.com. I'm also doing personal videos. So if you want me to do a personal video just for you about your situation specifically then you can look at it and play it five times a day if you need to i know you can do it i know you can do better but don't beat yourself up for being normal for having feelings for not being able to be a switch like the narc okay just stay focused because in the end you are going to be the winner you will recover and you're going to do just fine so thank you for watching today and you have a great day and i will see you next time Bye.